So about two months ago, I decided to add a um, temperature sensor to the Kubota tractor. Um, basically, these have a thermosiphon system and um, they used to have a whistle on the overflow pipe to alert you if it went over temperature. But I was just concerned when I mowed that you couldn't actually monitor what the temperature is. And if you got something blocked in the grill, that also wouldn't work very well. So um, I decided to build a little temperature gauge, which um, you will be able to see just there. Right, this tractor is just used for mowing predominantly. I do occasionally load things on the three-point linkage, but the other tractor that I have is the same kind, but it has a uh, front-end loader and it has a backer on the back of it. But that doesn't have a temperature gauge, so I'm going to show you how I um, uh, created the temperature gauge and installed it on the tractor. Okay, adding a um, temperature gauge to the um, B7100 stroke 001 Kubota. I'm building a digital temperature display that shows Fahrenheit and centigrade. Um, and it also shows you battery voltage. So here I'm assembling the circuit board. Okay, I designed a housing to suit that circuit board that um, sits on the tractor. Something like that with the display facing up. And uh, that's it. And then from here I send it to my 3D printer and we should have some parts that look like that fairly shortly. We can turn that off, that's the back housing and it has a couple of little um, bumps, one on each side that go to on there. So it's in there so it just clips together. Nice and simple. Right, I've sent the uh, file to the 3D printer and um, I've begun printing it. So the print is um, nearing completion and once it's finished we will retrieve it from the printer and then we can go and assemble the uh, temperature gauge. So here is the finished um, item on the printer. When you 3D print an item, you have to generate supports to um, uh, support the top of the housing when it's printed. Um, these need to be removed before you can use the item. The housing um, clips together using the um, little bumps we saw earlier in the uh, drawing. So here I'll just snap it together. Okay, and then I wrote some software um, which I will program into the machine and basically there's a couple of things there's a display routine that displays the stuff and there's the um, temperature 
um, calibration software where it reads it, reads it, and converts it into um, temperature. And then the main routine, which just runs around um, testing it. So basically, if the temperature is above 50, um, it'll display the temperature. Otherwise, it's just going to display the voltage. OK, once the software is created, we can um, then program it into the little microprocessor, which is on the control board. And um, we have to connect this to the computer via a programmer. So that's the red thing that you can see. And we'll load the software in, and then it should um, boot up. Now we can test the um, circuit board to make sure that it's going to work. So we'll um, connect it to um, a power source, and it should um, boot up and show some voltage. To read the temperature, we need a little sensor. So we're going to use a 10K NTC thermistor. Um, they basically are in an eyelet configuration, and you'll see why we, I chose that one later on. The next job is to make a, um, a little loom that connects the thermistor to the display. And we also need to connect um, 12 volts to the display as well. So that'll be part of the little loom. Right, so we have a little grommet over here that we can remove, hopefully. There it comes. All right, and that's going to be the position for the um, temperature gauge. Ew. Thing like that. Um, hole's got a little tight. Uh, there we go. Uh, uh, uh. Perfect. Uh, so temperature gauge installed. Now we have to install the sensor. So I've made up a little loom, which you saw earlier, with the um, temperature sensor in the end, which um, there we can just see that's the temperature sensor. It's a 10K NTC thermistor, which basically means um, as the temperature changes, the resistance changes in the, um, in the cable. So, and then that feeds back to the little controller, which then displays it on the dashboard. So the plan is, where the radiator filler neck exits, we will insert that just under the rubber. And that way there's no holes needing to be drilled or, um, you know, trying to go into the block because there's nowhere to bolt in a temperature sensor on this tractor. So that will go in there and then we route the cable down, around past the starter motor, and up to the dash. I'm now installing the loom, so I'll start at the um, front and work my way towards the back and um, connect it to the 12 volts and to the body for ground. So the 12 volts will be ignition switched. You have to remove the battery to get access to the back of the dashboard, so um, I've taken that out just to um, set it up so I can get in there and connect things. Okay, so we've successfully inserted the um, temperature sensor there. The cable is routed. All the way down past the bottom of the engine. All the way back to the display. So, we'll give it a test. Right, here's the temperature gauge. When you first turn it on, it um, displays the battery voltage. As you can see, so it's 12.4. Um, if we um, turn something on, I'll put the headlights on. You can see the batteries drop now. 
turn the headlights off and it will come back a little bit. Um, once it starts you can check that the um, system is um, charging correctly so basically it should start heading up towards 13 or 14 and once the tractor goes above 50 degrees uh, Celsius it will um, show you the um, temperature rather than the battery. So I'm going to start it now so you can see the um, batteries dropped because I'm glowing the um, glow plugs so it's creating a load once it's glowed a bit we'll fire away She's been running for a little while and um, yeah it's, it's dropped down to 64 if I start it now. <laughs> You can see that as soon as it revs, the temperature comes down because of the fan. And now it'll start creeping up again because it's um, uh, heat soaking and there's no cooling going on. So I'll probably go back to about 60 odd. There we go, 60. The two numbers are, uh, one is Fahrenheit and the other one is centigrade, just in case you're wondering why the display changes all the time. Okay, these tractors don't actually have a water pump. Um, they all had what they call a thermosiphon system. So it's got quite a large radiator hose for such a small engine. And that's because there is no pump. So it just relies on the hot water rising in the pipe uh, from the bottom of the engine to the top of the engine and um, basically the fact that the radiator is cooled by the fan cools the, cools the water in there so the water, cold water gets sucked in the bottom and the hot water through um, convection rises to the top and that's how they work so they tend to um, cool a little bit better when the RPM is a bit high because the um, fan's working optimally because being a tractor it doesn't get much speed up to get flow through the radiator so um, it relies on the fan moving at a good speed but they're quite reliable the main thing you've got to do is make sure that the radiator is always clean hasn't got debris in it obviously full and um, the other tip depending on the climate you live in is to only run with a minimum amount of antifreeze so if you're in a cold climate you might run 50 50 antifreeze if you're in a climate that doesn't actually um, freeze um, I would go 25% um, because that will improve the cooling ratio of the, of the um, whole system. And um, yeah, that's about the recommendation. 33 if it just freezes. I wouldn't go less than 33 if you're living in a, in a frozen climate. So that's about it.